What is a NAT gateway and why do I need it? Typically, most workloads in the cloud need some form of internet access. This could be for operating system patches or application upgrades. To talk to the internet, your application should reside in a public subnet where it needs to have a public IP address. This is accomplished either with an EIP or elastic IP address, which you would assign to an instance, or when you create the instance, you would declare it a public instance in which a public IP address would automatically be assigned. But if our resources lie in a public subnet and have public IP addresses, we need to enable an appropriate security group or NACL, Network Access Control List rules, that would protect those instances from unwanted access initiated from the internet. We don't want that, so what can we do to make sure that our workloads can access the internet, but no one from the internet can initiate back with those workloads? You put your workloads in a safe and private subnet. You create a NAT gateway, a network address translation gateway, in a public subnet and route your internet traffic through it. A NAT gateway has its own public IP address, and it allows your workloads to access the internet using that public IP address, but that will prevent any connections initiated from the internet to go to any part of your workload that you don't want. Suppose your current setup consists of instances in public subnets. Instead of exposing them to the internet, you can hide them behind a NAT gateway. This way, you can connect to the internet, and then the internet cannot connect or initiate back. This improves your security posture. To accomplish this, you would first create a NAT gateway. This NAT gateway will need a subnet and an EIP or elastic IP address. The NAT gateway also should reside in a separate subnet from your workloads. The route table that is associated with the subnet that has the NAT gateway needs to have its default route point to the internet gateway. This is how we allow the NAT gateway access to the internet and the internet can then respond back to the NAT gateway. Then we would update the route table associated with our workload to point our default route to the NAT gateway. This way, the path of the traffic would be initiated from your workloads through the NAT gateway out to the internet. The response would come back to the NAT gateway. The NAT gateway would know that there was an initiation from our workloads to that de destination, and then the response would be allowed back to our workloads. If there was going to be an initiation from the internet back to your workloads, the only IP address that it would see would be the elastic IP address of the NAT gateway. Because the NAT gateway doesn't have any initiated communications from your instances or your workloads to that destination, it would simply drop the packet. In summary, the NAT gateway offers a security layer to grant your internal services access to the internet without being exposed to the world. The NAT gateway is an AWS managed service that scales automatically. You can create it with just a few clicks from the VPC console. The NAT gateway can also be configured using a CLI or CloudFormation template. This will allow you to use infrastructure as code practices and allow you to change your infrastructure as well as your workloads rapidly. For more information on setting up NAT gateway services, please see this blog. Thank you.